Hey everyone, it's Megan here from Megan Makes Do, and today we're gonna make super cute little yarn loopy trees. <laughs> I'm not really sure what else to call them. Um, for today's tutorial, you're gonna need some Renat Blanket Extra Yarn or another type of thick chenille yarn. You'll want some styrofoam cones. Um, this is like a medium sized one, I think it's a number nine. You'll need a little birch round. I found this one at Michael's and then we drilled a hole into it, as well as a short little dowel rod that will fit into the hole, a little wooden star, and of course, a hot glue gun and a pair of scissors. Let's go ahead and get started. So to start our loopy Christmas tree, we're gonna use our cone and our hot glue gun. A trick I use is I put down a little piece of wax paper so any little drips of the glue can just land on there and I can throw it away when I'm done. Um, and then we're gonna start by wrapping the whole cone around with the chenille yarn so that we won't see any of the styrofoam when we are done. So what I like to do is I start at this seam here, put a little dot of glue, press my the end of my yarn right up against the edge of our cone. And then I can just do a small string of glue along the edge. And then continue to wrap my yarn around, trying to get as close to that edge as possible. We just continue to add glue and wrap our yarn around along the edge. And then once we get here to the beginning, we can start our next round around. We're not going to cut our yarn or anything. We're just going to make a continuous wrap around. So then I'll put some glue up here right next to our first line and then just start wrapping the yarn around so we're just going to wrap our cone completely with our chenille yarn just so that our whole styrofoam cone is covered in our chenille yarn.
Okay, so once we have the whole cone covered all the way top, we can just trim off any excess. Make sure that's glued down. And don't worry about this top part here yet. We'll cover that when we're done making our loopy Christmas tree. Um, you could also, if you wanted to just leave it like this, this is super cute as a tree as well. I would just fill in the top with some more yarn and stick it on our stand. But now that we have it fully covered, we're going to be adding yarn loops all the way around with a couple different layers, starting at the bottom and moving our way up to the top. Okay, so to start making our loops, we're going to go maybe like an inch, inch and a half up our tree. And then we're going to start by making little loops of yarn. And we want it to kind of hang off the end of our tree a little bit, like this. So depending on how long you want it, you can either move your loops up a little or down a little. I think I'm gonna like mine about there. So once I know kind of how long I want my first set of loops to be, so maybe about two, two and a half inches total, we're going to glue down the beginning end here A little dab of glue. Okay. And then we kind of want to squish them in as much as possible. But once I go up and make a loop up here, I want to secure that loop into place with a little dot of hot glue. Okay. And then we'll bring it back down, again, keeping the loops relatively close together. We kind of want them to be squished up against each other. And we will make our next loop at the bottom, kind of lining up with our other one, just like that, and then make a loop at the top. So we're just kind of zigzagging our yarn back and forth along the odd bottom edge of our tree. So then again, let's secure this top loop into place. And then we can make another loop at the bottom. Again, bring it up and make another loop at the top. And once we have our loop at the top, we secure it in place with a little dab of hot glue. And then we're just going to continue to make these loops all the way around our tree, making sure to keep them relatively even with each other. and always securing this top loop as we go. And then we'll have little loops hanging off the bottom of our cone. And again, you can squeeze these loops in as close together as you can. So we want our tree to have thick, full branches. <laughs> okay, so just continue to work that method, making little loops all the way back around, and I'll meet you back at the beginning. Okay, so here we're almost at the end. I'm going to bring another loop up here, kind of squish that in, and glue it down. And then I don't want to end here. I want to make one more loop and bring my yarn up to where we started. And then I'm just going to snip this off. And I'm going to glue that end right on top of our beginning end. So that way we have all completed loops at the bottom of our cone. Okay, 
So we've gotten our first little set of loops on our tree. It's looking so cute already. So now what we're gonna do is, let me see, <laughs> I think we ended about here. Um, everything's gonna blend in so nicely, you won't even see any of the seam. Um, so I think we're about here is where we started our first loops. So we're gonna move up our tree a couple inches so that our next set of loops will just kind of come down on top of our previous loops. So maybe about there. And same kind of thing, we're just gonna kind of zigzag and make a row of loops going all the way around. So I'm gonna glue our beginning of our yarn and our first loop in place. And again, where you want your loops to end, I like having about, I'd say that's about like an inch and a half or so of space between for my layers. And then same method as before, I'm gonna bring it down, line it up with the bottom loop, bring it back up to the top and secure that top loop in place with hot glue. And then we're just gonna continue that all the way around our tree until we have a complete second layer of loops. Okay, we're getting to the end again. So again, I'm gonna put one more loop in here and secure it in place. And then take my end, make one more bottom loop and bring it up to the top. Snip it off and we'll glue that end down right on top of our first beginning piece of yarn and I don't know about you but I am going to be covered in hot glue by the time we're done so here we've got in our second layer of loops you can see our tree is forming so cute oh my goodness they're going to be adorable so again, we're just going to continue making these layers of loops all the way up our tree. I will probably do at least two more sets. Whew, I'm let this glue, oops, still, still hot. Let's glue dry a little bit and then I'll come back and we will do our next layer of loops. All right, so I've got in my next few loops, ready to start my next layer. So just as before, we are zigzagging, starting about an inch, inch and a half from the top of our last set of loops, bringing them down just so that they cover those, that second set of loops just in a place that we like, whatever looks good to you. This is not, does not need to be an exact tutorial. Um, you can make it your own. I feel like 
all the little different imperfections, just give them more character and make them look more unique because every tree out in the wild is unique and different as well. So again, just like before, we're just working back and forth, zigzagging, making our little loops for our next layer of our tree. And just make sure that you're always securing that top loop in place. And then try to bring your loops down to the same spot every time. If possible, if they're not all exactly the same length, that's okay too. It'll look more natural. So I'm just gonna continue working all the way around until I get back to the beginning. And then we will work on our next set of loops. So you may do four or five sets of loops around. We'll see. See what our tree is looking like by then. And again, you may have more or less loops or tiers on your tree, depending on what size tree you are doing. Um, these cones come in all shapes and sizes. So, um, you know, some are really tall, skinny cones, some are short, fat cones, whatever kind of cones we do. I'm going to do probably three different sizes overall. Um, but I think this one skein of yarn is enough to do quite a few different trees. Um, so you could have a whole little cluster of trees out to decorate your house this winter. Okay, I will meet you back here when we are ready to do our next layer of loops. Okay, so looking at how much space I have left, I think I'm gonna do two more sets. So my next one, I'm gonna go a little bit shorter, so maybe only about an inch up. So I'm gonna secure my beginning tail and my first loop in place. So really, it's up to you, I mean, how many loops you wanna do. It kinda depends on how big you make your loops, how many layers you want, how you want your tree to look but I'm just gonna go ahead, I'm gonna do this layer and then I think I'll do one more. And for my last layer, I'm gonna try to glue most of it kind of up on the top so it kind of comes together in here to kind of cover up the top of our cone. But for now, I'm just gonna continue working around my fourth layer of loops on my tree. Again, just zigzagging back and forth and securing that top loop just as we have with all of our previous rows. So we're back around at the beginning, securing my last loop at the top. And then we'll make one last loop here at the bottom, bring our end up, snip it off. And then secure that in place right on top of where our first bit of yarn was. All right, I'm gonna let that set and then I'll show you how we're gonna finish off the last little section of our tree. Okay, so for our last loop, we wanna kinda try to cover up a little bit more of the top of our cone. So I'm going to 
start and kind of attach the end of my yarn so it kind of comes into the top of the cone and then we can start making our zigzag loops and kind of bringing our loops right up against the edge, almost kind of covering this top edge here. And this is gonna give the top of our tree somewhat of like a rounder shape at the top. It's gonna be kind of rounded. Um, but I still think it looks super cute. So if you want a more pointier top, I would just go all the way up to the edge here, but not go over and then maybe fill in the top of your cone with some extra yarn. But again, just as we did before, we're going to zigzag our yarn around and secure our top loops in place. So this will be our last tree layer. So just continue to work all the way around. This one will have probably the least amount of loops around, so it shouldn't take too long to finish this. And then we'll be ready to attach it to our stand. I should try to squeeze in one more loop in that or just let it be. I think I am. I think I'm going to get one more loop in here before I bring that edge up. Just so that it's full around this way and we don't have a big gap on that one side. Okay, so now I can make my final loop, bring my last piece of yarn up. That off, and again, I can kind of secure it into the center of my tree, just like that. And then you may have to just kind of pull all the hot glue strings, woo, ouch, off of your tree when you are done. Be careful with that hot glue, it is hot, <laughs> burning my fingers. Okay, but that is how we make our little loopy Christmas tree. And then you can kind of just like fluff up all the layers once you have it all finished. If you would like them more secure, you can always add hot glue underneath certain places just to hold them down a little bit more if you don't like them super floppy. Um, it's totally up to you. Um, feel free to stick them down a little bit more, but I kind of like mine a little floppy and, and loopy looking. Okay, so now we're going to move on to connecting our tree to our stand. Okay, so this is our little birch coaster. I got this at Michael's as well as these dowels, and then I went ahead and I trimmed my dowels down. They are not perfect. It's okay. And my husband helped me drill a little hole in here that the dowel can fit in. Um, but I want mine to be pretty secure. Um, so I'm going to just put a little bit of hot glue in there to secure my dowel in place. But actually, before I do that, I think I'm going to get the hole ready in the bottom of my tree. So we're going to flip our tree over. And then we're just gonna, you know, eyeball it, try to find the very center of our tree or our cone. And we're just gonna kind of push our dowel so that there's a little bit of a hole in there. 
and then that way we have a hole in there and we will fill that in with hot glue once we get the dowel on our stand. So make sure that you put a hole in the bottom of your cone first. And now we can secure our dowel in place. So let's see, I'm just gonna put a little bit of glue. You don't want a ton because you don't want it to be squishing out the top or bottom. And then we can just stick our dowel in. I have to turn a little bit because that hot glue just wants to harden up right away. So it's not all the way to the bottom, but that's okay. I know it's in there, it's secure, it's not gonna come out. All right, so now what we can do is we can secure our dowel to our cone. I'm just gonna squirt a little bit of hot glue in there. And then we're gonna stick our dowel in until it sets a little. And now our loopy Christmas tree can stand up on its own. All those bottom loops will be showing. We can kind of fluff it up get it how we want it, add some extra hot glue if we need to anywhere, but now it sits nicely on its own little Christmas tree stand. Adorable, I'm obsessed. So the last little bit of our Christmas tree, or just winter trees, it would be, if you want, it's optional, you can add a little wooden star to the top of your tree. I got these ones at Michael's as well. Um, you can either leave them the natural color or you can paint it yellow or gold. It's totally up to you. Silver if you want. Any color will be fine. And when you're done, you're just going to put a little hot glue on the ends and put it at the very top of your tree. And that's it. That's all there is to it. Um, I hope that you enjoy this tutorial and I hope that you will give these little loopy winter trees a try. Um, they're super fun to make. I put links to all of the items that I used in the description below, as well as a link to my blog post that includes, again, all the materials you'll need, a few extra pictures, and a photo tutorial. If you like this tutorial, go ahead and like it, and don't forget to subscribe for more.